Hello, math buddies! Today, we're going to learn how to find zeros of a polynomial function. I am Jordans, and welcome to Math TV. Our targets for today use the factor theorem, synthetic division, factoring, and the depressed equation to find the zeros of a polynomial function. For number two, find the polynomial function given the zeros, and number three, State the rational zero theory and use it to find the zeros of a polynomial function with rational zeros. Okay, zeros of a polynomial function. If x minus c is a factor of a polynomial p of x, then c is called a zero of a polynomial function. If c is a zero of a polynomial and the exponent on the term that produced the root is k, then we say that c has multiplicity k. Multiplicity refers to the number of times that its associated factor appears in the polynomial. We have example number 1. Find the zeros of the following functions. Letter A, p of x is equal to x minus 3. And for letter B, p of x is equal to x squared plus 7x plus 12. Solving for letter A, we have p of x is equal to x minus 3. That one is a linear function. To find its zero, we equate it to zero. So, x minus 3 is equal to zero. Solving for x now, it is equal to 3. Hence, 3 is a zero of the given polynomial function. For letter B, we have p of x is equal to x squared plus 7x plus 12. This one is a quadratic function. To find its zero, we're going to factor it. So let us equate it to zero. Then concentrate at the constant term, which is 12. What are the factors of 12? We have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Then look at the middle term, which is 7x. We must look for the numbers that will give us a sum of 7. So let us add 1 plus 12. It will give us 13. 2 plus 6 is 8 and 3 plus 4 is 7. That's what we're looking for. So our factors, x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 4. Then we equate it to 0. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solving for x now, it is equal to negative 3. The other one, x plus 4 is equal to 0. x now is equal to negative 4. Hence, the zeros are negative 3 and negative 4. Example number 2. Find the zeros of p of x is equal to x minus 1 squared times x plus 2 times x plus 4 raised to 3. Solution. To find the zeros, we equate p of x to 0. So, x minus 1 squared times x plus 2 times x plus 4 raised to 3 is equal to 0. That is, x minus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x now, it is equal to 1. Next, x plus 2 is equal to 0. x now is equal to negative 2. And x plus 4 is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 4. Are we done solving? No, not yet. Take note of the degree. The first factor is raised to 2. Meaning to say, the x minus 1 appeared twice in the given function. So, 1 has multiplicity of 2. And x plus 4 raised to 3 appeared 3 times. So, 4 has multiplicity of 3. Hence, the zeros are 1, negative 2, and negative 4. Where 1 has multiplicity of 2 and negative 4 has multiplicity of 3. Example number 3. If 5 is a 0 of p of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 25x plus 25, find the other zeros of the function. Using synthetic division to find the other zeros, we get the coefficients of the given polynomial. That's 1, negative 1, negative 25, and 25. Our synthetic divisor is 5, the first 0. So let us proceed. Bring down the first term, which is 1, then multiply it to 5. So 1 times 5 is equal to 5. If we write it below the second term, then we add negative 1 plus 5 is equal to 4. 
Then, 4 times 5 is 20. We write it below the third term. Then add. Negative 25 plus 20 is equal to negative 5. Then, negative 5 times 5 is equal to negative 25. Write it below the last term. Then add. 25 plus negative 25 is equal to 0. So, correct. 5 is a 0 of the given function. After that, let us write the depressed equation. The depressed equation is an equation with a degree less than the given p of x. So, we have x squared plus 4x minus 5. We can now solve for the other zeros by factoring the depressed equation. x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. The factors of 5 is 1 and 5. And if we add negative 1 to positive 5, it will give us 4. So, we have x minus 1 and x plus 5. Then, we equate it to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x now, it is equal to 1. Next, x plus 5 is equal to 0. x now is equal to negative 5. Hence, the zeros are 5, 1, and negative 5. Example number 4. Find the polynomial function that has exactly 1, negative 2, and 3 as zeros. Solution. For x equal to 1, we have x minus 1. For x equal to negative 2, we have x plus 2. For x equal to 3 as 0, we have x minus 3. By factor theorem, the polynomial function has the factors x minus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 3. To obtain the polynomial function, multiply its factors. So we have x minus 1 times x plus 2. Using FOIL method, x times x is equal to x squared. x times 2 is equal to 2x. Then, negative 1 times x is equal to negative x. And negative 1 times 2 is equal to negative 2. Next, combining like terms, we have x squared plus x minus 2. Then, we multiply it to x minus 3. Using distributive property of multiplication, we have x cubed minus 3x squared plus x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6. Combining like terms, we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Hence, our polynomial function or p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Rational zero theorem. If p of x is equal to a sub n times x raised to n plus a sub n minus 1 times x raised to n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 times x raised to n minus 2 plus and so on plus a sub 1 plus a sub 0 where all coefficients are integers, a sub n and a sub 0 must not be equal to 0 and p over q is the rational zero of p of x. Then, P is an integral factor that is a positive or negative whole number factor of a sub 0. And Q is an integral factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. Take note that it only gives a set of numbers to try as zeros. So, let's have an example applying rational zero theorem. Example number 5. Find the zeros of p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Solution by rational zero theorem, we have p over q. For p, we take the constant term which is 12 and write all the factors of 12. Positive negative 1, positive negative 12, positive negative 2, positive negative 6, positive negative 3, positive negative 4. Then we take the value of q, which is the leading coefficient of the leading term, and that's equal to positive negative 1. Divide it, we have positive negative 1, positive negative 12, positive negative 2, positive negative 6, positive negative 3, and positive negative 4. We now try these numbers using synthetic division. If x is equal to positive 1, we have 1. Then, we write the coefficient of the given polynomial. That's 1, negative 2, negative 11, and 12. Bring down the first term, 1. We multiply 1 to 1, so 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 
we write it below the second term. Then add negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. We write it below the third term. Then add negative 11 plus negative 1 is negative 12. Negative 12 times 1 is equal to negative 12. We write it below the last term. Then add 12 plus negative 12 is equal to 0. So check. 1 is one of the zeros of the given polynomial function. Now, let us write the depressed equation. That's x squared minus x minus 12. We can now solve for the other zeros by factoring. x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to 0. The factors, x plus 3 times x minus 4. How do we get it? x times x is equal to x squared. 3 times negative 4 is equal to negative 12. And 3 plus negative 4 is equal to negative 1. That's how we come up with x plus 3 times x minus 4. Then, we equate it to 0. We have x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solving for x now, it is equal to negative 3. And x minus 4 is equal to 0. x now is equal to 4. Hence, the zeros are 1, negative 3, and 4. Example number 6. Find the zeros of p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. Solution. By rational zero theorem, we have p over q. For p, we take the constant term which is 6 and write all the factors of 6. Positive negative 1, positive negative 6, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, then, we take the value of q, which is the leading coefficient of the leading term. That's positive negative 1. Divide it. We have positive negative 1, positive negative 6, positive negative 2, and positive negative 3. We now try these numbers using synthetic division. Let's try 2. So, we take 2. Then, we get all the coefficients of the given polynomial function. That's 1, negative 4, 1, and 6. Bring down the first term, 1. We multiply 1 to 2. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. We write it below the second term. Then add. Negative 4 plus 2 is equal to negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is equal to negative 4. We write it below the third term. Then add. 1 plus negative 4 is equal to negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is equal to negative 6. You write it below the last term, then add 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. So check, 2 is one of the zeros of the given polynomial function. Now, let us write the depressed equation. x squared minus 2x minus 3. We can now solve for the other zeros by factoring. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. We have x plus 1 times x minus 3. Then, equated to 0, we have x plus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x now, it is equal to negative 1. And x minus 3 is equal to 0. x now is equal to positive 3. Hence, the zeros are 2, negative 1, and 3. I hope you enjoy our discussion for today. See you again for our next lesson. Thank you. Have a nice day and God bless everyone.